With varying type of genres, uh, the gaming culture is then affected because depending on the type of region you're living in, it varies on which game is most popular and what is sold the most. Some examples of this is Japan versus America. For Japan, there's a lot of vibrant and cartoonish type of visuals, and oftentimes there's a teenager or a child with magical powers and crazy hair for the protagonists. They also have a leaner gameplay that they like to play, which is pretty straightforward, follow the story. Um, some examples of this is Final Fantasy, Mario, and Pokemon. As for America type of games, um, they like a realistic and dark type um, style games with middle-aged white men who are rough and strong for their protagonists. Uh, they also like dynamic and freeing games where they have a lot of choices and where they can vary off the storyline with side quests and etc. Some examples of this is Call of Duty, Halo, and Elder Scrolls. Over to the top left we have Call of Duty, over to the bottom left we have Halo, and over to the right we have Elder Scrolls. These are all American types of games. You can see the dark and realistic type of features that's going on. And then over to the left we have Mario, with the right we have Pokemon, and the bottom right we have Final Fantasy, again showing the more cartoony type of stylized cutesy game they produce. Types of Gamers Countries, cultures, and regulations can affect the gaming community. Um, the type of gamers can be identified between the demographic of gamers, varying from gender, age, type of um, gaming, and intensity of level they put in. Um, I have statistics recorded, and I will present to you those soon, and it compares uh, countries as a whole, compares them against each other, and the intensities of levels comparing females versus males. Regulations on video games. If you play video games, you know that video games can be addictive, um, and the reason why is that by experts it has actually been identified as an impulse control disorder because it releases dopamine, which is which increases your mood and state of mind. This is a similar neurotransmitter that is activated with other addictive activities such as drug abuse and sex. Therefore, it is also addicting. Um, the time if again if you play video games, you know that the time required you have to put in is a lot because to make any progression or just fully emerge yourself into the story, you can spend about five hours on that video game. Um, because of this, countries have took and stand against video games. Um, one example is China. As of recently, they have stated a law that minors cannot play from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., also stating that they can play, they no, are not allowed to play longer than three hours on weekdays and not weekends and holidays, and no longer than 90 minutes on weekdays. This affects the cultures, um, um, the gaming culture, depending on the country, for example, China, because it takes away time and therefore affecting the dedication that can put be put into games. Um, I, over to the right, we have recorded statistics of some countries and the time, the average weekly gameplay hours they spend. As you can see, Germany leads with 7.98 hours, and we have the least amount with 6.69 hours in South Korea. Um, according to my research, it actually shows that there's a growth of 31% in Germany and a 51% in South Korea. So those numbers can change. Um, and also, according to my research, Germany and U.S. are actually tied for the most played in a week. This is not average based. This is just based on individuals specifically. And it says that 12% of their population says that they spend at least 20 hours a week on video games. Demographic statistics. In these statistics, I will be carrying um, America, the United K um, Kingdom, Japan, Germany, and South Korea. If you look over to the middle, you see age statistics. As you can tell, there's 21% Generation Z takes up the community. We have 40% with Millennials, 18% with Gen X, and 21% with Baby Boomers. Um, if you look to the top, you see gender statistics listing male and female consecutively. We have U.S. with 54%, um, 46%, Japan 34%, 66%. United Kingdom, 51-49%, South Korea, 63-37%, China, 73%, 27%. With this being said, if you notice that Japan actually is the only country that has a higher ratio of females than they do of males. And this can be related back to what I said earlier, where Japan has a culture of producing cute and cartoon and kawaii type games, which would attract more of a female consumer versus a male. Um, if you look on the bottom statistics, it shows levels of gamers depending on the gender. It's more common for a female to identify herself as a casual or novice gamer, while it's more common for a male to identify himself as an expert or an aspiring professional.
types of gamers. If you, okay, so a type of gamer can vary between platform and game style, like I mentioned before, types of game styles that Japan versus, you know, and then there's platforms. Um, some platforms being console, mobile, PC, and some game styles being casual, social, and competitive. And these statistics I would be recording um, against America, United Kingdom, and Germany. If you look over to the right, you can see some population statistics. Um, if you UK has a population of 300 not 300 33.6 million while Germany has 38 8.5 million and the US has 157 point um 157 million gamers. Um, as you can tell, 50, um, 157 dominates the 33, so that says that America is very leading within the industry. If you look over to the left, you can see some of the statistics for platforms and types of games that they prefer. It is said that the most popular Platform for the UK is console, while the most popular platform for the US is casual, and the most popular platform for Germany is PC. It also says that the least popular for UK and US is PC, and the least popular for Germany is social. Based on all that information I just gave you and all the statistics, there's a lot of uh, things that put in time on what can vary on a culture. Um, there's a lot of varying demographics on who plays and how they play and what type of genres they prefer to play on. Over the past decades, the in conclusion, over the past decades, the video game industry and community has gained great popularity, thus um, considering billions of players worldwide, thus creating a very successful and profitable industry that every country wants to get involved in. Um, with new technological advances each year and the industry taking advantage of this, they continue to increase the popularity of the industry, thus making more money. And if they continue this trend, they will... Video games are far from dying. Um, with that being said, video game culture varies based on demographic regulations put in place and a country's culture. Through video games, bonds can be forged and preserved. It creates a positive environment. It shows social awareness with different um, cultures and backgrounds and cre can create social change. The gaming community does welcome everyone and it is a positive environment. So this community is possibly never going to die and just creates a positive impact on the world in general. Therefore, if you aren't a gamer, which is not very likely since this is digital media history, um, I highly encourage it because, like I said, it improves your skills, it improves your life skills that can help you with your future jobs, it creates a community where you can connect with others, it brings about social awareness, and you can learn a lot of new things just by playing video games. Uh, it's also a very good pastime versus other things that you could spend your time on, and it's just generally a nice thing, and it's progressing into the future, so you might as well jump on the train. This is my bibliography showing all the links of all the pictures I got from, the second page of all the links of the pictures, and this is all the sources I got my statistics and research from. With that being said, thank you for listening, and have a great day.